what's going on, y'all? What is going on? Good to hear from y'all. Good to hear from y'all. Thank you to everyone that has been listening to the podcast on iTunes, Android, and or Stitcher, stickerfridge.com slash Dom C. She tastes like sex. Dom C, D-O-M-C, and you listen to Dom Cast. How did you get here? How did, how did you get here? How did you find me? I was hiding from y'all. Thank you so much. And thank you for the five-star reviews, people. And just so y'all know in the future, if you're going to leave a five-star review, roast me. Because if you leave a five-star review and roast the shit out of me, um, I'm going to be reading those on the podcast. So if you're listening to this right now and you feel like talking shit because I have long, gorgeous, luscious hair, thicker and nicer than your girlfriend's or you, if you're a female listening, or maybe because I have gold, rose gold fucking nipple piercings, go ahead, roast me and I'll read it out loud. But thank y'all for the feedback. It's you know it's getting better. It's trial and error. There's a lot of there's a lot of practice that goes into talking to yourself. Even though I've done it my entire life, I know I've been crazy my entire life with that. Anyways, this past week, I actually went. I, I, I'm trying to lay off all kind of caffeine because I'm just a naturally manic person in general. And I, I used to take a prescription uh, clonopin benzodiazepines. Uh, for years just to calm me down but some mornings it's like I sometimes I feel like I don't even need it but it's just the taste of coffee I love it I like a little bitter a little tannic some people like a little sweet and a little creamy uh, I like bitter I like tannic I like my wine and uh but I ended up getting coffee and I was at local coffee which they opened up one over here off 1604 and local coffee I think it's their coffee or them they're owned by a different they're owned by something. I, I don't know the whole backstory. I'm not going to try to pretend like I know the backstory, right? But I went in there, and it looks like everyone that works there plays bass in a fucking ska band. And a friend of mine told me that one time. She's like, I love local coffee because I, my coffee tastes better when it's made by someone who plays in an emo band. It's like, I don't even know how that became a style. I don't even know if they're musicians. I don't know if anyone's a musician anymore. It doesn't take any talent to be an artist anymore. Because back when I was playing music, you had to learn your instrument. Now, everything's MIDI. Everything is MIDI. And if, if people who don't do music, this is what MIDI is. You get an electric keyboard, and you get what's called a MIDI cord, and you shove it in a computer, and that sends basically uh, numbers, an algorithm, it sends it to the computer. Those numbers mean a certain sound, and all of a sudden, you're playing guitar using a keyboard. It takes really no practice. You could you could separate them. You can move the notes around. Back in the day, especially when it was real to real, that and not trill recognized trill or real recognized real. When I mean real to real, I mean recording reels, uh, almost like film reels, but it was for recording, and it was fucking expensive. So that's why you didn't hear a lot of bands back in the days. The record labels. We're only using the the, the the most talented people they could get. The most talented people they could find, those are the people who got signed. That's the way it should be. But then, with the power of the internet, uh, people were able to record in their own houses. And now you get the crazy shit we listen to today. This whole generation is so fucking weird. Now, another observation is they date backwards. So... If you were born in the 80s, even though I was born in 89, I still claim I'm an 80s baby because I can. It's on my fucking birth certificate. Oh, you're, you're a 90s baby. Oh, well, then why does it say I was born in 89? Good God. Get the fuck out of here, dude. So we used to take people out on dates. You'd have to ask for their number first, and then you have to call them. Not, not between dinner time. You know, you talk to them at school. Then you go out on a date. Then you, you might share each other's favorite movies or music and then you might go to the movies and touch a little thigh and then after months of courting you bang right nope says this generation this generation you bang first and then you might hang out after and then you might share some music and movies and then you might actually be boyfriend and girlfriend you bang first now if 
if you think about it, this kind of makes sense, dude. It kind of makes sense. Do I think it's right? No. Definitely don't think it's right. But you don't go to, and it sounds so cliche, but you don't go to a car dealership without test driving the car, right? But still, I and, and all these people, oh, my pullout game's strong, man. I'm not going to have a kid. Hey, you fucking idiot. It's not about getting someone pregnant. Your dick. That vajay could be poison. That dick could be poison. Like, get, do people understand like one in four people now have an STD? Oh, my pullout game's strong. Oh, really? Do you have uh, the antibody? Do you have the anti vac? You have the the vaccine for HIV in your blood? Do you? Because that's not a joke. Do you have herpes come along and your blood kills it? Can we can we get your blood? Drop it on a herp and see what happens. You know what? I I wrap it, and I still pull out, dude. This ain't no fucking joke out here, dude. Ain't no fucking joke because we had all the '90s babies are raw dogging each other at church camp, and that's what it is. There's no other way around it. So they do it all backwards. You bang first, then you go out. You see some movie you really don't care about. You take them out. You buy some overpriced cocktails. Oh, Dominic, you're a bartender. Why are you saying the overpriced cocktails? Hey, genius. Anywhere you go, if you're drinking booze and it's not at home, it's overpriced. Okay? Do you understand? When you buy a glass of wine, the price for that one glass is essentially what they're paying for with the bottle. How does that make you feel now, huh? How does that make you feel now? So, if you're not drinking at home, you're paying too much. Yeah, there's not people. Unless you had some people over. Yeah, there's not some jukebox playing Neon Moon. Yeah, and you know what? My living room doesn't have Starfuckers for $3. But honestly, if you order Starfuckers, I don't want to drink with you. I don't want to drink with you. You're inexperienced. You're what I like to call an inexperienced drinker. An inexperienced drinker. You're the one that ends up with Rufalin. Oh, no. And all those people, you know, they're 21 years old. This is my favorite. When, And I, as a bartender, I hear this all the time. They come to the bar. They sit down. And they go, oh, la- I, last weekend when I went out, I got roofied. Really? Bish. You got roofied? No. It's because you slammed 12 Malibu and pineapples and took three shots. You fucking genius. You blacked out. You didn't get roofied. You roofied yourself. Congratulations, dude. You blacked yourself out. Thank God you didn't kill anyone driving your car. Okay? And you probably walked your tab. And you probably can't go to that bar anymore. But guess what? You won't because you think you got roofied there. Hey, hold off on the Jaeger bombs. Hold off on the Jaeger bombs, okay? Oh. <sighs> I'm a little frustrated today. I'm a little a little on one, dude, as they would say. On one. Yo, black people are just the fucking they are the funniest, man. But they will they protect themselves. The white people don't. It's like I said. This is also you know what? This is the baby boomers that did this to this generation. It's the baby boomers that did it. And they thought they were the all knowing, and there were so fucking many of them. There were so many baby boomers. That they created the culture and now they're old. You know, they created this culture. You created all this. The housing crisis, fucking everything, right? Right, right? Well, also, the people, and like I always make fun of white people for their diets, which, number one, don't ask me about your fucking diet. If I was on Weight Watchers, I wouldn't go into your restaurant and say, ah, oh, how how many points is the pulled pork sandwich? You know what? I wouldn't. Don't ask me questions about what's gluten or not. If you actually had celiac, which I have friends who have celiac, and guess what? They don't tell anyone because they know what they can eat. They know what they can eat. Okay? Can I make that any more clear? So when you ask me what you can eat on your diet, I'm not your fucking parent. I'm not your nutritionist. Okay? You should know, you should understand it. Don't 
Don't even start a diet if you don't even know what the guidelines are. If you don't even know what the guidelines are, don't ask me, okay? Or else, or else I'm going to go to Gold's Gym and I'm going to get a job there as a nutritionist. I'm the in-house nutritionist. Oh, you're gluten-free? I can tell you exactly what to eat. Now, what about this generation, though, is, you know, I didn't grow up from means at all. We were poor. There was times I was hungry, you know, but that was just normal. It wasn't, we didn't have a fridge that just was refilled from the, the Schwann's truck every other day, okay? So, I'm going to say, I never throw away shrimp, okay? Even if I work in a restaurant, let's say you're at a restaurant that I'm working at, and you get a shrimp Alfredo, but you leave one jumbo shrimp, and you go, no, I don't want to take it home. I, we got to go shopping. I don't want it to sit in the car. Guess what? Hey, guess, guess fucking what? I'm eating that shrimp. The second I walk in the dish pit, I'm eating that shrimp, right? And I'll, I'll get that fucking juicy shrimp, and I'll put it in my mouth, and then someone will go... Ew, did you just eat off someone's plate? Did you just eat off someone's plate? Oh, aren't you the one five minutes ago that were telling me about uh, how you lick your boyfriend's butthole? Okay, let me get this straight. You won't eat something that was cooked 20 fucking minutes ago off someone's plate but you'll lick your boyfriend's ass after he has been at the gym for three hours. Please tell me what is going on. What, have I been in a coma? Is this why a president is a fucking... A celebrity is our president? And he's shaking hands with Kim Jong-un? And you're licking buttholes but afraid to eat a piece of shrimp off an Alfredo? Unbelievable. Absolutely fucking lutely unbelievable. And also, the baby boomer... Hey, just... Hey, alert. Hey, if you're a baby boomer, listen up. I got something for you. Stop calling marijuana dope. Okay? I can't stand when people are like, Oh, yeah, they're over there. You, you know, they're, they're they're getting rid of all the... They're trying to get rid of the opioids. They're trying to get rid of my uh, pain pills so they can get all the kids on dope. You know what? Sit down. This is called Dom Caesars. Uh, you know what? You got busted for uh, something at court You got and you got to go pay money to go take a, a drug and alcohol class? Guess what? I'm going to teach it. First off, dope is heroin. Guess what heroin is? An opiate. Guess what your pain pills are? An opiate. Marijuana is not dope, dude. Eh, you can't die from it, okay? Baby boomers, are you listening? Hey, remember the guy that used to smoke dope in your high school class? The guy now who's uh, healthy as a knock still with his silver hair running around music festivals? Wearing way too many wristbands. Thinks he's Johnny Depp's fucking brother. Yeah, you should have You should have talked to that guy about it before you you became an alcoholic drinking a bottle of whiskey a day. Oh, because that's totally healthy for you. Seriously. I've never smoked pot. And drew, like one, uh, gotten angry and punched someone. What's up with this Kratom, though, y'all? I tried some of that. I bought some of that. So they got different kinds of Kratom. If you don't know what Kratom is, it's a leaf from uh, Southeast Asia. They've been using it for hundreds and hundreds of years for the medicinal use. In low doses, it acts like an amphetamine. In high doses, uh, it essentially feels like an opiate. It releases the same chemicals in the brain that opiates uh, release hits those receptors and it is a fucking rush of dopamine and serotonin like you've never believed but weird way to take it don't smoke it you can put it in the pill but you have to take a large amount of it so you'd have to eat like 10 pills to have an effect so yeah it's it's green powder and most people make a drink out of it or something but essentially you just mix it up with water and you shoot it and they give it to i mean it's like a it's like a natural methadone, I guess you could say, which it's it's helped many people. So you got to give it up. It's helped a lot of people. Um, for some reason, it's legal in Texas, uh, but illegal anywhere there's an opium problem, like all throughout the East Coast. 
Virginia, New York, Michigan, all those places, it's illegal. And actually, every state I think that's touching Texas, it's illegal. Oklahoma, it's illegal. Louisiana, it's illegal. Uh, why it's legal in Texas, which is the most conservative, hardcore dr- uh, states on drug law, I, I'm still trying to figure that one out. But they're going to crack down on booze like crazy. Now, why did I start talking about Kratom? Anyways, and people say it's got a horrible taste. Well, those are people that drink soda every day of their life because it just tastes like unsweetened green tea. If you can handle that, you can handle the taste of Kratom. Any of my friends that are going through opiate addiction or heroin addiction and you're afraid to deal with the withdrawals, go to Planet K, buy yourself some Kratom, open up to them. They're not going to call the cops and bust you. That You say you're using, you're trying to get off. They will help you out. Get yourself some Kratom. Use it. I mean, it's not a daily use kind of drug. It's something to use when you're coming off something. But it's beneficial for people who have problems. But honestly, like, is any drug, is any drug a daily use drug? Really? No. Nothing. Everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. All right. I'm going to, let's switch topics here. I'm talking about this for way too long. Now, I'm wondering if this is a win or a loss. I need y'all's help here, okay? And once you once you listen to this, please get on Twitter and help me out and tell me if this is a win or a loss. The country of Chile, right? Imagine like, <laughs> imagine someone listening to this shit in like twenty fucking eighty when Brinker. And their brand Chili's actually owns a country. I could actually see that happening, to be honest. Those people are, they got deep pockets, as they would say. But no, the country Chile, when you look at it. Now, I study wine, right? You all know that. Some of y'all know that. So I'm a wine nerd. If it wasn't for, (laughs) if it wasn't for, looking at maps of South America to learn growing regions. I would not know where the fuck Chile is on a map. You know why? Because it, because if you told someone the shape of Chile, they wouldn't believe you. What? Why is that Dominic? Because they took the entire West coast and made it their country. Now this is why I know either winner or loser because to me, they're losing. You need some inland. You need some inland to grow crops, to have cattle. Y- you can't just own the coast. California tried. They still had to go inland. So, is Chile winning? I don't know. I will tell you, they have some of the best Cabernet for the price point in the world. You know what? Let's say you're a wine drinker, okay? I'm going to go off and buy grapes right now. Vitis vinifera. You know what Vitis vinifera is? It's the grape used in making wine. Uh, but you can, like, make wine out of any grapes. Burr! Nope. Sorry, you can't. Concord grape jelly. That's called Vitis lambrusca. And not lambrusco wine. Vitis lambrusca. That's the genus and species of the grape you use to make wine, Vitis vinifera, right? Well, Cabernet Sauvignon. Sauvignon means savage because the grape Cabernet can literally grow anywhere, like a savage. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc. It's it's white and it grows like crazy, like the population of Alabama. Um, So basically, Cap Franc and Sauvignon Blanc somehow underground created the mutation Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, The most popular and its birthplace is the left bank of Bordeaux, France. Thrives literally anywhere, but people, they say the gravel helps too and the soil type. So the wine can grow anywhere, right? Well, let me tell you something. They started growing Cabernet Sauvignon in What's that one place in California? Oh, Napa Valley. I'm pretty sure all y'all have heard of Napa Valley. If you haven't been there already, I can't. I'm too poor. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't even let me in. Even if I said, even if I had a card that said, hey, I'm Italian. I got my white card in the 80s. Let me in. They probably wouldn't. 
I would have to act like I'm a French wine grower or something. Anyways, it's super expensive out there. Way too expensive. If you're ever taking a wine trip, go to the Sonoma Coast. Don't spend your money in Napa. You can, you can drive to Napa from Sonoma in like 45 minutes. Just do that instead. Hands down, you'll have a better trip. Everyone will be happier. You can thank Dom Caesar later when you get back, okay? So Napa Cabernet, the most overrated grape juice in the entire world. Now, it's not bad. It's not bad. But for the price point, there's a lot of shit out there. So if you want something, you want what they would call an iconic wine, you're spending over $100 a bottle in Napa, California for a Cabernet Sauvignon. If you want a a bottle, an iconic, from an iconic vineyard or like a winery, eh, you're going to spend 40, 50 bucks. You want a dope ass Cabernet? Go to Chile. Go go to the Chile aisle at HEB or wherever you go shopping. Uh, Total Wine, Gabriel's, Don's and Ben's. Go to the Chile aisle and look at the Chilean Cabernet. Hands down, amazing. Why? Because it's not, it's not pretentious. Essentially it, it's what it is. You have families that had these vineyards forever and they've passed them down for generation on generation on generation. It's not pretentious. There, there are barely vineyards in California that are getting on, they're getting passed to the uh, second generation. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's mind boggling and Someone correct me if I'm wrong, you know, because I'm a dope. I don't know what any of this shit means. And when I said dope, I didn't mean I was heroin or what the baby boomers say, marijuana. No, uh, I'm a dope. And uh, uh, if you told me to do a calculus problem or you were going to shoot my brother in the head, I would look my brother in the eyes and be like, bro, fuck, dude, I love you. (laughs) Why? So, I'm a dope and I can figure that shit out. Go get yourself some Chilean Cabernet, okay? The truth is in the fucking bottle. If you want to go, and you know what? The price it would take, the price of a trip to Napa Valley, you could probably live in like Thailand for six months. You could probably buy a house in Thailand for the price of a trip to Napa Valley. You got to think of things like that. You got to think of things like that. See, Maybe it's, maybe, I don't know if, I don't even think it's a male and female thing, a gender issue. Hey, he's getting, he's getting all, uh, he's, he's being chauvinistic and he's speaking about genders. You know what? People, when they start identifying as things, my first experience with people who identify with something other than they are, guess what grade I was in? First grade. Why? Because I went to school with a kid. I'm not going to name names, right? And he literally thought he was a velociraptor. Okay? Let that sink in. He identified as a velociraptor. Now, the teacher had questions. Teacher thought he identified as a flamingo or some kind of bird. Some kind of hollow bone animal that likes to stand on one leg with his arms tucked in like little chicken wings. And we talked about this in the last podcast about chicken wings. If you've listened to episode two, you know my stance on chicken wings. And you understand my brothers and sisters. They tell me that I I don't eat chicken wings like a white boy. Okay? I'm pretty much an expert on that. Now... Imagine folding your arms up like a bone-in chicken wing because that's actually called a chicken wing, not a chicken nugget, dude. Next time I have a guest on here, that's going to be the exit question. That's going to be the exit question. How do you eat your chicken? Hey, let's say we're going to go watch the game. We're going to, we're going to Little Woody's. We're going to Little Woodrow's. Get to, eh, order some wings for us. Yeah, get, yeah, get like get a dozen wings. If I tell my friend to get a dozen wings... And chicken nuggets show up, and there's no blue cheese. I fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm doing? I'm not gonna say fucking anything. I'm gonna look at the bartender and go, "Hey, 
Is that a bottle of Don Julio 1942 up there? Hey, is that a is that a bottle of McAllen 25? Ooh, you got Johnny Walker Blue? Can I get two doubles? Neat. I'm going to order those. I'm going to get two doubles. A Don Julio 1942. I'm going to ask the bartender to chill it and dress it. Which, if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, that is some high-end tequila. You don't put a tequila like that in a slut's dress. Let's just say that. <laughs> and I'm going to get those. I'm going to make her chill them and pour them in a dress shot glass with a lime. I'm going to fucking shoot her. I'm going to go, hey, hey, bro, um, can you just ask her for another set of uh, silverware? I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I'm going to... I'm going to call an Uber and I'm going to drive away and block your fucking number. I'm going to, and that's it. That's how our relationship is going to end. That's how it's going to end. You know what? If you want to be my friend and we go out, just pretend, just pretend, try to eat bone in wings because if you don't value our friendship, then go ahead and eat your fucking chicken nuggets. Or if you're going to order them, don't ask for wings. Say, hey, can I get 12 chicken nuggets? Oh, sir, we don't have chicken nuggets. Oh, I meant the boneless wings. Sorry. <laughs> you know, My friend here, he's got a strong stance on him. And she's probably going to go, yeah, because why are you eating a kid's meal? Okay. Let's, let's, let's plow forward here. But I want to stay on the topic of food because I am a Chinese buffet connoisseur. I am a connoisseur. I've been to all of them in the city. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like there's something wrong going on in San Antonio. When I go to a Chinese buffet and 80% of it is Mexican food or fucking chicken nuggets, dude. Where are the authentic, great Chinese buffets? You know what? Tweet me. Domcast210. Or email me. Domcast210 at gmail.com and tell me where the legit buffets are. China Harbor? Been there. Done that. Was good. Got a little, started slacking. Back in the day, fortune cookie on fire. Chocolate fountain. Now I walk in, it looks like a YMCA cafeteria, dude. And then, if I'm going to a Chinese buffet, why do I want to see three aisles of enchiladas and carnitas and asada? Yes, that sounds amazing. I am not dissing that food. I love that food. But if I want that, I'm going to go to Taqueria. That a pint. That, yeah. Why am I talking? Why am I saying Spanish words like an Italian? Yeah. Taqueria. That a pint. Yes. Not fortune cookie. Hey, was that my fortune? Hey, what does your fortune cookie say? Oh, my fortune cookie says, today you will experience a grand surprise. Hmm, I wonder what that is because I walked into an Asian restaurant and there's pinto beans everywhere. That shit is got no, that shit is done, dude. It's an MSG. Ain't nothing wrong with MSG, bro. Ain't nothing wrong. That's a savory flavor. I if I if I'm driving by a restaurant and their sign says no MSG, guess what? No business for you. Ain't getting my money. Ain't getting my fucking two cents. You want that. That's that savory. That's a umami, dude. That's a umami, bruh. That shit is... That's that fucking chicken savor flavor hitter. It's next level. So, I used to go to this one place. Uh, it's out of business now, so it don't even matter. But I used to go there. And they're probably out of business because they stopped using MSG. Best sesame chicken in the city, possibly the state, quite pos I heard Houston has a really nice uh, K-Town, C-Town, F-Town, which I lost money because I thought Filipino started with a P. Apparently, it starts with an F. Uh, that's why they went out of business. You know, I used to not be able to stop eating their damn sesame chicken their general sows, all that. The second they took the MSG out, it's like, where, where's, where is? Okay, you ever eat crawfish? Anyone eat crawfish? 
you ever see a huge ass fucking crawfish? You're at a crawfish boil, but you're just going through the tails, just eating them. Those are like little, those little nuggers, you know? And you pull a, a tail off of this big, beautiful bastard, and there's like no meat in the middle. There's no meat on the tail. And you're like, well, that's kind of odd. You know, like when you go out on a date with, uh, the pitcher of the fucking baseball team. He's like six foot four. You're like, oh my God, I can't wait to get home. He's probably got a hog on him and he pulls down his pants, right? Looks like a fucking baby bird poking out. That's sesame chicken without MSG. Don't fuck with me, dude. I'm not one of your, I'm not one of your little, uh, I'm not that kind of white person. Okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to go gluten and GMO free. Give me the MSG. Okay? I didn't go into a Chinese buffet trying to be healthy. I didn't walk up and go, you know what? That was a great workout. I I just want to eat a meal where I just feel fresh. You know? I'm going in a Chinese buffet because, A, I'm high as giraffe puss. Or B, I'm poor and I need to eat as many calories as I can. Or three, I'm just feeling gluttonous. Or four, all of them punt together, dude. All of them together. So don't 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 make me pay over ten bucks for unlimited healthy ass food. For ten bucks, you know how much salad I could buy at H E B that I'll never eat and will go bad. Huh? Salad, salad's such a ripoff, hands down. Yeah, I do enjoy it sometimes. Don't get me wrong. Now, I might need some medical help here. So, I got a happy trail. I actually have a happy forest. I have a happy forest. That's the Italian genes in me. It's the Italian Hungarian genes in me. And now, when was the last time you looked at your belly button, huh? Sometimes you get things in it. Sometimes you got to clean out your belly button. You don't think about it because when you're growing up, your mom was never like, okay, you got to wash your feet, got to wash your face, got to wash your hair, got to wash your chest, whatever. She was never like, yeah, go in there and scrub that damn belly button out. Well, you know, if you're a grown ass adult and it's sweaty, like it is, it's hot in South Texas and you get sweat in there, uh, things manifest. Okay. Things manifest. Even like your feelings. Okay. Even if you have emotions. If you have emotions and you got something that you're holding in, you got something that you can't, you don't want to talk to someone about, guess what? It's almost like mold. What happens when you punch something in the dark? It manifests. It it grows and becomes moldy. Because it doesn't have any UV sun coming down, right? It doesn't have any light. You got to shine some light on it. Well, maybe I haven't been taking care of my belly button uh, to the best of... Uh, I'm not taking care of my belly button like an adult. Okay? I'm not being an adult about how I'm taking care of my belly button. Okay? Because I was in there and I saw what looked like a blackhead. And I was like, okay, this is weird. And so I had a lot of hair though. So I was like, man, I can't see it because it's blending in the forest. So I got some little clippers, little, you know? If you're a guy, you got the one clipper that you use you, you use on your face, and then you use the same clipper on your pubes or your balls or your gooch. And I actually said the word gooch the other day, and someone didn't know what I was talking about. They, said, they thought I was saying a nickname for Gucci man. Ha! No, far from it. It's called the perineum. Okay? Go look it up in a Webster's Dictionary. You know, let's actually add the word gooch in there and get rid of the word inhibitions. Throw your inhibitions to the wind. Fuck, I hate that word. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I have a brother who hates the word moist. 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 Well, guess what? Moist has a brother and its name is inhibitions and we need to remove them from the Webster's Dictionary. But look up perineum. It is your gooch. When I said gooch, they're like, oh, I was listening to Drop Top Wop. I got that album. 
both eyes closed. Count money with both eyes closed. And I was like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, well, do you think I'm talking about music? When I'm trying to tell you a story about my belly button right now? How does that even work? This is a Gucci man. I think Gucci man wasn't thinking about that. Okay? And I'm pretty sure Perineum, it wasn't slang for Gucci in Italy when they were making Gucci products. So I see this little thing that looks like a blackhead. So I buzz all the hair around it and I see what looks like just a quarter of like a millimeter little tip of a hair coming out of what looks like this blackhead. So I'm already like intrigued by my own body. Like if I just let one rip, I want to smell it. Part of me is like, let me just smell it all. Not because I don't want other people to smell it. I made this. Or if I take a rowdy dump, I have to look at it. I have to. There's no way. Sometimes I'm shocked. Sometimes I take what feels like my lower intestine just falling out of my body. Look down. Ghost poop. Nothing. And then I'll even wipe. Nothing. I still wipe. Because I'm civilized. But essentially, I mean, that happens. So you're telling me you don't believe in ghosts? Explain that one to me. Well, you're probably eating a high protein diet and poop that floats is high in fatty acids and the fat floats because because muscle would sink, but the flat, flat, you shut up. Shut the fuck up. Because I just let out a monster dump. It should be there. It's not. So I pull out my tweezers. And I get down deep into this blackhead. So I, 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 I'm I, like, well, let me just pull this hair off. And then maybe if I pull this hair out, I can squeeze this blackhead out. So <laughs> just picture me on my back with my shirt off with my little beer belly flab folded over my belt with tweezers looking like I'm playing the board game fucking doctor time. What was a board game called? Why can I not think of it? Uh where it buzzes, you got to take out well, you got to take out the kidney bones attached to the femur and the femur is the strongest bone in your body, but your friend broke it in a car accident. Uh, what is that game called? Is it just called ER? Is it called Mr. Doctor Man? Is it called Video Games Weren't Invented Yet? So I get the tweezers and I'm just maneuvering down there. And I and I finally get a grip of the little hair. And I pull. And all of a sudden I get this weird chill down my spine. Because I'm pulling and I'm not feeling anything. Um, like any pain and this thick, thick, it almost looked like a rope the way how, how many thick black hairs are wrapped around this thing. I start pulling it out of my body. This hair, I shit you not, is four and a half inches long, thick, like three pubes just wrapped together and I pulled it out of my belly off the side like if a belly button was like a meat like a a crater from like a meteor i'm right there on the ridge on the rim and i pull this thing out and there's a little uh, there's a scent in the air that lasted for like only two seconds and it wasn't like one of my rowdy farts or anything this thing smelled like dead tissue and right after that thing got, and I just looked at it in amazement. And I had a, I threw it in the toilet and I flushed it. After I stared at it for like 20 straight seconds, I was like, wow, what is going on? I even sniffed it because I'm a guy and I'm interested in what my body's doing. So then I look back at my belly button. There was one and right where I just pulled the last one. There was another little hair sticking out. Pull that out. Wasn't as long. Squeeze. Nothing comes out. Just crazy ingrown hairs. 
please someone with some kind of medical background tell me how in God's name does that happen? It was wrapped up, looked like crazy black rope, and it came out of my body. Didn't hurt, didn't feel it, nothing. How does that happen? Now, what's even weird about the story is two weeks later, I'm like taking a leak with my shirt off and I'm starting to grow the hair back on the place that I buzzed and then the little black spot is back with another little hair. Pull it again, just smaller this time, probably about the size of your pinky nail, but it keeps growing back. So is that from eating too much MSG? Is that because I'm shoving GMOs in my face? Huh? Huh? Can someone tell me what's going on, huh? Because I obviously don't. Now let's switch around here. Now let's shift gears. I'm going to give some advice, some wisdom. Now if you do have some questions you want me to answer, go. You got an email? Email me. Domcast210 at gmail.com. And I will read your questions out loud on the podcast and I'll do my best to uh to answer or give share my perspective. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist. Um most of the time I'm rarely anything. All right. Well, I'm gonna give some wisdom right now. Hey, you're a girl and you can't get laid? What? What? Like you you will see dudes. You'll see ugly dudes, they'll never have sex for, you know? You'll see men die virgins. It is very rare you'll see a woman die a virgin, right? I mean, even the most... I don't... We, 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 we're not hurting anyone here, right? Let's say... Let's say you're not... You're not the most liked color in the pack of Crayolas. Guess what? There's a way. Funny girls, dude. Funny girls. Hey, you're a funny girl? You can you could marry a f- NBA player, an NFL star, an actor. Hey, if you're funny, that's all that fucking matters, okay? Hey, I got a lady. She's hilarious, dude. She's not you know, she's very quiet in public. When she's around people she's comfortable with, she's a little different. But when she's around me, she's hilarious. Guess what? She's she's my lady. Now, you girls out there are like, oh, hashtag forever alone. Hashtag forever single. Shut up. Guys are already sick and tired of hearing you complain anyways. So quit complaining how you're alone when you got 50 guys that would bang you and wife you on the spot. You want to find a quality guy? And your your T and A ain't doing it. Your pearly whites ain't doing it. Your eyes ain't doing it. Your hair ain't doing it. Your pheromones coming out your skin ain't doing it. Make them laugh. Be goofy. There is nothing funnier to a guy than a goofy girl, man. It is cute, hilarious, and attractive. I almost think it might even be like an evolutionary trait. <laughs> it's kind of like, all right, we're already attracted to the thicker ones because... If it, if let's say uh, it got it was a blizzard, and you had to cuddle up next to something warm, it was cold. You lived somewhere where it was cold, and you had to cuddle up with something warm and soft, softer than the hard ground in your little tent that you made out of uh, bison skin. You know your little teepee. You want some warmth there, and that's why men they like curves. They like thicker women. Of course, I was saying all men do, but the majority do because it's an evolutionary thing, right? Well, so it's funny because you're like, well, now I'm going to be stuck with this person in this teepee in the middle of fucking nowhere. I'm hunting buffaloes. Be funny, girls. Be goofy. There's nothing more attractive. You don't even have to be good looking. Just be funny. Guys will eat it up. Maybe there's a guy that you like, but he's, uh, you know, a lot of girls are trying to get at him and all these fucking bimbos all these bimbos are getting closer than you are guess what i can 86 all those bimbos go up there make them laugh just say something dumb and funny he will laugh and go wow huh. you're pretty fucking cool huh. you wanna uh, yeah. 
you want to you want to bang and then maybe take it from there boom you're in you're fucking in kids and also this instagram tv i deleted my facebook this whole social media stuff's gone a little too far I couldn't do Facebook anymore. Even though Facebook owns Instagram, I feel safer on Instagram. But the fact that people get Facebook and go, well, I just don't feel safe. I don't feel like I have privacy. Why the fuck did you get an Instagram or you're on social media? You don't, you want privacy? Then why are you going to get something that has access to all your videos, pictures, text messages, and then you publicly tell your emotions to? Are you that? Is this what are? Is this what's happening in 2018? People can't grasp this. This is why I have people from other countries coming over, and succeeding way better than our own people, because they see opportunity while we just basically are relishing in first world problems. <laughs> Seriously, this is why they want to stop people from coming in this country. They're like, hey, hey, hey. they're taking all the jobs. Why? Because they're working harder than the people that live here. Because they have more push, more drive. They're more ambitious than the people that live here. Because the people that live here, they're lazy. I used to tell this story. When I lived in Austin, 45th, uh, I lived off 45th and Duval. But I used to work at the Chili's, bring this thing full circle, Brinker. They owned Chili's at 45th and Lamar. It was north of the UT campus. I don't know if it's still there. Uh, might be. Uh but I work there, and I'd go to work every single day. And there was an older Mexican lady. Uh, she had, I think someone told me she had like four or five kids, something like that. Um, and her husband was worked in the back of the house, but she worked front of the house, and she was a busser. Didn't speak English at all. And I've worked in a lot of restaurants at this point. I didn't work in as many as I do now, but looking back, it made me respect her more. This woman was the hardest busser, server assistant, whatever you want to call it. Probably one of the hardest workers in that entire restaurant. She made her money, but she did her job. She did it with pride. She did it with elbow grease. She always had her chin up. And she smiled whether she knew what the fuck you were saying or not. She only spoke Spanish. She was the first one in. And she was always there when I left. And then I'd get in my car. And I'd pull off onto 45th. Going towards 35. Past Guadalupe. Going towards Red River so I can get to my crib. And I would stop at a, a red light. And I'd look over to the left of me. And some guy. Some white guy. Who speaks English. With an elementary, middle school, and 80% of the time, high school degree is asking me for money. Bro. And you know what? I've offered people who ask for money on the side of the road a job. I said, hey, I can't. I know you're sitting here all day. You're out here for 10 hours and you're begging for change. I know the GM of the restaurant right there. He can get you a job washing dishes for 10 bucks an hour. Never have one of them said, oh, thank you so much. Where do I apply? They go, oh, no, thank you. And then get really awkward about it. And then go to the next car and keep asking for money. That's the problem we have. This is why there's no middle class. This is why there's only the top of the fucking pyramid and that we're, we're separating. The middle class is dissolving and you have the rich and you have the poor. You know why? Because the people who have the capability of being the middle class don't want to work anymore. And then I'd go back to work the next day and I'd see that lady busting ass, busting tables, making money, punting bread on the table like a fucking G. She's backing up the Brinks truck for her whole damn family and I got to come out and I got to drive my car and park next to a Starbucks and have some guy named Lionel Smith ask me for a couple of bucks. Dude, you have a Blackberry in your pocket in an age before iPhones and you're asking me for money, dude. No, I'll give you a job. You can work like the rest of us. 
You can work like the rest of us. Not saying there's people out there that are homeless that don't need help. That legit, There are people that legitimately need help. But I'm telling you, the large amount of them are just bums. Just bums. They did a study in UT. And they were making upwards to like sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year. They're making like three hundred dollars a day basically. Asking for money on the side of the road. So when you offer a job to someone who's making three bills a day doing fucking nothing but begging, and you ask them, um, hey, or you ask them, hey, I can get you a job. Do you want to work? For ten dollars an hour, you'll make eighty dollars, but it'll be Uncle Sam money. Who the fuck? That that's the problem with people who sell drugs on the streets now. It's like, dude, you could flip a, you could flip a pound. In a in less than a week, make a G. Why is that guy gonna go surf tables? <laughs> Why is that person gonna go bartend? Why is that person even gonna go to school? You're making forty five dollars a fucking hour at that rate. You know, you sell an eighth for 35 bucks. And all you had to do was someone showed up at your house. That's $35. Oh, you sold two. You made $70 in one hour. That's the problem. There's too much easy money to be made. I, I mean, I love my job. I sell booze. It's literally selling legal drugs. That's all it is. But it's a cash grab. It doesn't feel like a real job. They always said, oh, you know, you'll never work a day in your life if you do what you love. Well, you know what, friends? Dom Caesar feels like he's doing what he loves. So I am blessed. Where are we at? 52 minutes. 52 minutes. Well, I'm going to wrap this one up this week. This might be a little shorter, but you're basically getting an hour. I want to thank everyone who's been listening. Everyone who's been uh, texting me, hitting me up on the gram, um, thank you so much for y'all's support. Y'all been awesome. I want to keep consistently giving you something to listen to throughout the week. Um, every Wednesday, I plan on dropping them, so that should be when you should keep your ears out and your eyes out. If you follow me on Instagram at uh, she tastes like Texas, um, I'll pop up. Says Dom Caesar. Follow me. Uh, subscribe to me on iTunes, Android. Episode 1 and 2 is out. You'll hear this Wednesday the 27th because I'm recording it Tuesday night after I slaved at work all day so I can make a bill. Uh, And like I said, if you leave a five-star review and roast me, I will read that roast. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Go through. Hey, you don't know what I look like? Go to my Instagram. Look at me. Listen to me and, and then roast me. And I'll read it. If you got any questions, uh, go to domcast210 at gmail.com. Send your questions in. I would love to read them on here. If you want some relationship advice, you have a crazy story, you've maybe listened to some new music, you got a new favorite restaurant, you know, maybe other podcasts you like, my friends. Uh, And remember, Check out stickerfridge.com slash domc. You can find all the links there. RSS feed, Android, Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes. Uh, And yeah, I will catch you all on the flip side. Thank you all so much for listening. I will see you next week. Bye. Love you.